Hey, I'm Nathaniel Fawson. I'm a professional archaeologist, and this channel is devoted to the archaeology of North America, especially in the region that we call the Eastern Woodlands. Now, a few days ago, some news broke that some human footprints were excavated in New Mexico, and they've been dated to between about 23,000 and 21,000 calibrated radiocarbon years before present. And that's some of the earliest evidence that we've got for a human presence in the interior of the Americas. And these results were published in a journal called Science, which I found tends to publish somewhat sensationalized research. So I was optimistic but skeptical about the claims of this report. Now, before I get into the report itself, I want to point out that for a couple of decades, a lot of archaeologists have provided really strong evidence that we have sites on this continent that predate Clovis culture and the opening of the ice-free corridor, which is traditionally how kids in school are taught that people moved from like Siberia to Alaska and into the interior of North America. And I've talked about that in the first two First Americans videos, which I've put links to down in the description. So whatever I might think about the quality of this particular report, I'm confident that people were in the Americas thousands of years before Clovis culture coalesced a little over 13,000 years ago. Now, first things first, the White Sands footprints were found on the north side of White Sands National Park in southern New Mexico, and there are several species represented in these footprints, like mammoths, but the prints that we're worried about here are the human ones, which are unequivocally human. No other animal on Earth has a footprint that looks like ours, so it's not like um, a coyote and a wolf, which you can mix those two up, or a cow and a bison or something like that. So eight different geologic surfaces with human footprints were identified and assigned track horizon numbers, or TH numbers. And they are um, kind of these surfaces that have the footprints pressed into them, and they're kind of stacked on top of each other. The report lists them kind of backwards to how we would normally do it. Uh, TH1 is the deepest and the oldest, and TH8 is the highest and the most recent. Normally, we'd put uh, one at the top and eight at the bottom because if we revisit the site, go deeper, and find that there are deeper horizons, then we have more numbers to go to. But it looks like the lead author is affiliated with the UK institution, and they do things the other way around, where uh, the, the deepest and oldest is, is the lowest number, and the highest and most recent is the highest number. Uh, these footprints were pressed into wetland mud, and that's not really surprising to me because I've heard several southwestern specialists describe the environment of New Mexico as similar to modern-day Minnesota during at least parts of the Pleistocene, so a lot of swampy environment. Based on the sizes of the footprints, it looks like most of them were made by teenagers and kids, which is interesting. Now, the dates themselves come from radiocarbon assays of seeds from... Rupia kirahosa. These are a kind of a wetland grass. And these seeds were interbedded with the footprint layers. So you'd have uh, a layer of, of footprints and then you'd have a bunch of seeds on top of that. And then you'd have another layer or two of footprints. Then you'd have more seeds and so on and so on. The footprints themselves are a good indication that the context is pretty undisturbed. If a bunch of burrowing animals or uh, tree root systems or, or whatever were dragging older seeds up into these positions. They destroy the footprints that were, you know, the things that were really interested in, in the first place. The footprints would have been obliterated. And even then, there's no reason that those kinds of disturbances would redeposit the seeds in a consistent order with the oldest seeds at the bottom and the youngest seeds at the top. And we, we see that pattern pretty consistently throughout the column. There's also indication that the seeds were pressed into the footprints as people were walking around. So people stepping on the grasses and um, those, those seeds being embedded in the footprints as they're being made. Now, there is a process that could potentially skew these dated seeds to look older than they actually are, and we call this the reservoir effect. So basically some kinds of bedrock or water soluble. So if there's a, a lake or a swamp on top of that rock, the very old geologic carbon is dissolving and getting into the water. So plants that grow in that water are then incorporating that old carbon supply that uh, is already depleted in carbon-14. So a carbon date of those plant seeds will make them look older than they really are. I personally think it's really unlikely to see the reservoir effect 
skewing a bunch of Clovis period radiocarbon dates back 9,000 years older than they actually were. And I definitely don't see any reason that the seed should cluster so tightly between 23,000 and 21,000 years ago. Because uh, environmental shifts are going to make those reservoir effects fluctuate in their intensity. So droughts concentrate the old carbon, which should increase the effect, and heavy rainfall dilutes the old carbon so that alleviates the effect. Also, the reservoir effect is more closely associated with limestone geology, since limestone is high in soluble carbon. It's like calcium carbonate, for instance. So all in all, I find this report pretty compelling. It's difficult to argue that the context is disturbed when something as fragile as the footprints are being fossilized. And I can't think of an argument against the accuracy of the carbon dates that would push them anywhere near the, the Clovis dates. But I would like to see some sort of luminescence dating techniques used on some of these strata. So if I hear any solid arguments against the, um, the quality of this report, I'll address those, but maybe in a, another video or something. But for now, everything looks to be pretty well in line with what most archaeologists have been saying for about the last decade or so. So as always, if there are any questions, you can leave those in the comments. And until next time, thank you for watching. Thank you.